Dennis said. There now follows a budget statement by the Chancellor of the Exchequer, the Right Honourable Kenneth Clark, MP. Tonight, I want to answer the questions which people put to me as I travel around the country. Are things going to get better for us in the year ahead? How secure are jobs? What are the job prospects for our children? Can we depend on high quality public services? What is the future for the British economy in this competitive world? For three years, I've been working to be able to give you confident and encouraging answers to all these questions. Today, I've increased spending on schools, hospitals and the police. And I've also cut taxes so that you can keep more of what you earn and save. And I've done both in a careful and responsible way that's good for our economy. My priorities as Chancellor are prosperity and jobs. So far since the recession, unemployment's fallen by over 700,000. Businesses in Britain have created over half a million new jobs. Most of these new jobs are full-time jobs. A quarter of a million new jobs have been created by investment from overseas. By firms like Siemens and Samsung, that have the confidence in the British economy to set up in business here. The jobs that they and our homegrown businesses are creating are helping us achieve lower unemployment than our European neighbours. In Spain, over 20% of the workforce are unemployed. In Italy and France, over 10%. In Germany, it's about 8.5%. And in Britain, we've now got it down to just over 8%. I know we need to do more. And my budget will help to get more people back to work. For example, today I've announced another cut in employers' national insurance contributions, the tax on jobs, and I've paid for this by taxing the tipping of waste instead. I'm following policies to ensure that we never return to the days of boom and bust. That's why we must keep on top of inflation. High inflation's killed off growth in the economy three times since I entered Parliament. Some of you remember the great leap of inflation reaching nearly 27% in the mid-1970s. Inflation rose again at the end of the 1970s and yet again at the end of the 1980s. Every one of those leaps in inflation caused real hardship to many families and bust many businesses. It's my job to set interest rates and policy so that we avoid that. Over the last four years, we've had the best record on low inflation for nearly 50 years. And I'm determined to keep inflation down so that we can look forward to many more years of growth. The other thing I've done in all my budgets to make sure the recovery can last is to keep downward pressure on government borrowing. The less the government borrows, the easier it is for, to keep interest rates down. Firm action's working, and I'm sticking to it. That's why I can now begin to do more of the things that, as Chancellor, I want to do. Spending more on the key public services, and taking less tax out of your pay packet or savings, so that you can enjoy more of the benefits of growing economic success, to which your efforts are contributing. There's more for schools, hospitals and the police. Over £800 million more for schools. £1 billion more for the health service. And enough for 5,000 extra police officers. But I've got overall public spending under better control than at any time since the war. We really are cutting out the waste. We are cracking down on social security fraud. We've cut the costs of Whitehall made sure the government only does those things government needs to do, found better modern ways of financing projects like roads. That's how I've found the extra money we can afford for the important, modern, high-quality public services that you and I care about. As well as spending more on state schools and national health service hospitals, I've also been able to cut taxes. Let me just dispel a myth. When I cut taxes, I'm not giving money away. The money's yours in the first place. It just means I should be taking a little less and leaving you with more of your own earnings or savings. 
I believe that I have to start to lower your taxes to make our economy more competitive. When we came to power, the basic rate of income tax was 33 pence in the pound. We got this down to 25 pence in the pound. Not satisfied with that, we set ourselves a fresh target of 20 pence in the pound. Many people refused to believe it was possible when we first set it. Today, I've taken three more giant steps towards that 20 pence target. First, I've cut the basic rate by one penny from 25 pence to 24 pence in the pound. That helps nearly 20 million people. Second, I've moved more people from the 25 pence rate to the lower 20 pence rate. Next year, one in four of all taxpayers will only pay tax at 20 pence in the pound. For every pound they're paying tax, they'll keep another four. Third, I've cut the rate of tax on savings income to 20 pence in the pound for all basic rate taxpayers. That helps 14 million pay people with money in a bank or building society, including a lot of pensioners. For every 100 pounds interest they receive on their savings, they will now keep another five pounds. I've also taken steps today to help the growing number of older people who have to go into long-term residential care. From next April, nobody with savings less than £10,000, instead of the present £3,000, will be expected to contribute at all from their capital to their nursing home fees, so they can all keep more of their savings. And I've raised the threshold for inheritance tax, from just over £150,000 to £200,000. And that means that the overwhelming majority of families can pass on their savings to their children and grandchildren, without worrying about tax. These aren't rich people. They're mostly middle-income people who own their own home. I've always wanted to see a society which encouraged saving and helped families to build up and secure their finances. I've also cut the duty on whiskey. There's a good industrial case for that to help a big and important exporter. And it will cheer up those of us whiskey drinkers. Altogether, for a family where only one partner, husband or wife, earns average earnings, these tax changes are worth some £190 a year. Taken together with rising pay, the same family should be better off by about £450 next year after tax and inflation. They'll be £700 a year better off in today's money than they were at the time of the last parliament. Some people will ask, why I didn't cut taxes by more? Well, I could have used the extra two billion pounds that I've given to our schools and hospitals to pay for tax cuts. I don't actually think many people would have wanted that. In my opinion, it would not have been the right thing to do. I believe we must have a budget that's good for the economy and a budget that is socially responsible as well. I've always believed in being straight with you. When I had difficult things to do two years ago, I didn't hide that. Now those things are starting to pay off. We must work together for a future in this changing and competitive world where we in Britain will be better off. I want better public services. I want secure jobs. I want prosperity that will last. I want tax cuts that are for real. A Britain that will truly be the enterprise centre of Europe. This budget helps us on our way. It leaves you more of what you earn and spends more on what you really care about. It gives us all more confidence for our economic future. Good night. That was a budget statement by the Chancellor of the Exchequer, the Right Honourable Kenneth Clark, MP.